If you've never seen the video clip of the young man Ben Underwood, who's a young man who learned how to see without using his eyes, it's very inspirational. So watch this um, sh short clip and then I'm going to tell you a pretty amazing story. This week's People magazine profiles a California teenager who does some remarkable things despite his disability. This is something you just might have to see to believe. CBS News correspondent John Blackstone reports. In a pillow fight, 14-year-old Ben Underwood can deliver a dead-on shot. When a video game is going, his fingers fly. On his skates, he's fearless. For most teenagers, it's nothing remarkable. Car, car. I had a car. But Ben Underwood is blind, totally blind. Hear the clicks? That's how he finds his way around. To walk down the street with Ben is to be amazed at what he can see with his ears. Well, there's a fire hydrant on the side and a car on this side. Wait, is that, no, that's a trash can or that, hold on, let me see. That's a trash can? <laughs> yeah, that's a trash can. Ben was just two years old when cancer claimed his eyes. Both were surgically removed. And he woke up from that surgery and Ben said, Mom, I can't see anymore, I can't see anymore. And I said, you can't use your eyes, but you got your nose and your ears and your mouth. From that day on, Ben has used his hearing, his touch, his sense of smell to conquer a world of darkness. It's sometimes hard to believe how good Ben is. Just watch the way he deftly steps around a fallen trash can. I don't know how you do that. Somehow, Ben has mastered echolocation. It's the same way dolphins get around, bouncing sound waves to figure out where they are. On a trip to SeaWorld a few weeks ago, Ben found that he and the dolphins shared an amazing talent. All right, ready? Out of the water, it becomes easy to forget that Ben is blind. Ha-ha! That was luck. How else to justify my pleasure when I put a couple of goals past him? Ah, you thought you were so good. I am good. He is indeed. Ben beat me five to two. Ah. <laughs> Playing video games with his brother Isaiah in the assault of noise, Ben can figure out everything that's happening just by listening. How can you even separate the sound? Because they got different voices. Nobody is going to tell him that there is an impossibility for him because there are none. This mom ought to be teaching a course on, you know, how do you raise a kid who can't, who can't see well. Dr. James Rubin says Aquanetta has done exactly the right thing with Ben, never being overprotective, never putting limits on him. You know, I think the real story here is not, is not his talents, but, but his attitude. And I think attitude is what it's really about. We have to give our kids confidence. We give them pride. Empower him with who he is and be proud of who you are no matter what. <laughs> you can see where Ben gets his extraordinary self-confidence. <laughs> There's nothing that you can do. I can't do better. <laughs> and that's the attitude. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to give him. Watching him in action, it seems clear that Ben really can do anything. For The Early Show, John Blackstone, CBS News, Sacramento. All right, so here's the cool story. So um, sometimes after that was aired, um, a friend of mine, a business partner of mine, was in Hawaii for a real estate um, uh, event, and he heard this woman speaking out just in the street on the sidewalk, um, just kind of speaking about life. And he said he was really moved by the power of this woman's words and her conviction. And he felt compelled to walk up to her and introduce himself. But she was surrounded by people, and, and he, he, he talked himself out of it, basically. He says as he turned to walk away, the woman actually reached out to him, said hello. And they eventually had a little short conversation, um, come to find out you know, that she was there because her son couldn't, was blind, et cetera, et cetera. And he asked her where, where her son was, and she said, well, he's out there surfing. And he said, you know what? I bet you I saw a video clip about you and your son, Ben. And she's like, yep, that was us. So long story short, um, they really hit it off, and he invited them out.
to our convention and, and this is what Ben had to say as he addressed us at our national convention. I got a question. Is every person over 40, is your big, um, you know, your, your big dream to retire from both your jobs and still make a lot of money? I could tell because y'all sure keep talking about it. <laughs> well, see, um, when I, like, 13 years ago is when after I had that, that first tumor from, that made me blind. And then now this new tumor, they talking about, it's radia they think it's radiation from the last time, and now they're giving me radiation again. That don't make no sense to me. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tell them now, if this, if this radiation is going to give me another tumor in 13 years, expect me to throw it at you because that's, no, I ain't trying to deal with that again. Because after every radiation treatment, I get real tired. I just, man, my head, it, my head, it hurts sometimes behind my left eye, and then, oh, yeah, I just get real tired. I hate it. But I try to go to school anyway, because I be so bored at home. <laughs> and then, when, like, when I, when I went back to school, I was so tired, man. Like, I, I, at first, I wasn't too tired, and then I started getting tired in fourth period. I don't even bring my backpack. I just go to school and sit up in there. Sometimes I just fall asleep. Cause ain't nothing else to do. And so, um, basically, you know, with me, I don't really get the big deal when everybody worry about all these tumors and cancers and all this other kind of stuff. What, what is, I really don't, un, I don't see what the big problem is when somebody says, oh, I got, I got a tumor or I had cancer or they're talking about their family member who had this and who had that. Okay, but why is it such a big deal? I, I really, I, I don't understand. And people, they, I tell them that and they just, Talks to me like I'm crazy. But well, what are you talking about? He might die. Well, calm down. Like, <laughs> you can achieve a lot more with, through God than what you can just, you know, trying to do everything on your own. Because you ain't going to get nowhere by yourself if you don't have God in your life whatsoever. So, you know, you can, you know, you can trudge along and, you know, walk down the street. But that path, that block ain't never going to end. But you can walk with God hand in hand, and you can get to your destination, no matter you know, no matter what happens, you know. Ah, man. <laughs> Goodness, I tell you this though, I sure do love God. I sure do love God, cause <laughs> after all this stuff I'm going through right now, oh man, that the chemo treatment is the worst. Like, oh. One time, I'm telling you, I was throwing up through my skin. I was throwing up so hard, it, it, was, it wasn't even hurting. People, people keep telling me that it was sweat. I'm like, no, nah, this wasn't sweat. This was like foam. It was so nasty. I did, oh, wee, I couldn't take it. It was, man, chemo is no joke. And then, but like, I, you kind of get used to it after a while. You know, but now, because now um, I don't throw up as much from chemo except certain ones, and other ones they just give you like really bad nausea sometimes or things like that, but um, I know some other people at the school, some teachers and stuff who talked about they've been through chemo, and like when I first was started going through chemo and at school when I got tired, I might sit on the ground or something, and they would try to tell me to, you know, um, you can't sit there, da -da -da. they try to send me home, I'm like, no, I'm okay, I'm just trying to rest, and I don't, I, I don't, I'm not one of those people who try to take a whole bunch of help from other people. And the only reason why is because the only way I learn from my mistakes is if I make my own mistakes. So if I'm doing something and I make that mistake, that's the only way I'm going to learn from it, is if I make the mistake on my own and then learn from it. You can't, you know, let somebody else make your mistake and then you try to learn from... You can learn from somebody else's mistakes, but it's not going to be as a big you know, drop on you unless you make it on your own. That's real, that's real talk, because you can't, that, that's, the, yeah, you know, I'm done. <laughs> Man, so my hat's off to, to Ben for being brave enough to, to share with us, and you know, it, it's, it's odd that it took a, a, a young blind man to show us 
what can happen if you're brave enough and strong enough to keep moving forward. My hat's off to his mother for being strong and courageous to um, force him to develop that independence. And my hat's actually off to my friend Rodney for having the presence of mind to act on his impulse to speak to the woman that he seemed to be moved by at that freak arbitrary meeting in Hawaii. And uh, to Ben, welcome to the team. Welcome your entire family to our team.